Hello, welcome to Board Game Life. On today's episode, I will be playing the game Element. As you folks know, uh, a couple of episodes ago, I did a little excursion to uh, the gaming store and picked up this new game. I got a gift card for my birthday. And uh, while there are a lot of games that I wanted to play, boy, I gotta tell you, I've just been itching to play this game because it's the newest game that I've picked up and I really wanted to play it and I've been looking at reviews online and it actually looks like a it looks like a lot of fun. So let's unbox this puppy and see what's inside. All right, let's take this thing apart and see what's in it. Ooh, look at that. Killing off the plastic. Something like that. When you go open the game for the first time, you gotta peel the plastic off. Element. Ooh, that's nice, huh? And as always, there's always a little bit of struggle there. Oh, look at that. Came right off. Da -da -da -da. Oh, fell over. So I'm gonna guess this is how you play the game. The rules says element silver expansion rules of play so this is a little bit different than the regular one this is a silver expansion so i'm going to guess there's another element in it other than the regular one okay so here is this right here i don't know exactly what that is but we'll find out i guess this is just the goal to set up more stuff on how the game is played look at that Look at that. Look at that. Okay, let's see here. Ooh. Nice board. Really nice board. And here are some squares. Some squares, there's three squares. Hmm, interesting. That's on this side of it, and that's on the other side of it. As you can see, we've got this bag here. Papao. The bag, and we've got these things here. Ooh. And then we've got the, I'm sure these are the, the things that represent the elements, you know, like fire and then silver and then water and then land. And you got these little guys here. They represent your players. I'm sure. Look at those. Look at those cute little guys. All right. Well, let's have a little setup here. the board and that is whoa, crazy that is what's inside all right let's learn how to play the game all right let's talk a little bit about how the game is played I guess the first thing that you would need to do is decide whether or not you're going to be playing with four, three, or two players, okay? So if you're playing with two or more players, three or four players, you basically choose your avatar and you set them in these circles around the board. And this is your, if you're playing with four players, you're like this, if you're playing with um, three players, it's like this, but if you're playing with two players, you actually start here. So that's a little bit different. You take, remove that off the board if you're starting with two players. Now the goal of the game, the whole object of the game, is to surround your opponent so that they don't move with element stones, okay? So, um, so you take all those little discs that represent the elements and you dump them into this bag and you give it a shake and each person is allowed to draw up to four um, uh, pieces at a time. You don't have to draw four pieces. 
and I'll explain that in a minute, but, you're, but you want to draw up to four pieces at a time. Now, let me just show you a little bit about what I mean here. So what you want to do, and let me get a few more pieces out here just so I can kind of explain this, is you want to surround the other person somehow with all the elements that you can surround them with and and then therefore then they can't move and because they're surrounded they're captured and then that person wins now if you're playing with four people or three people uh, this person is trying to capture this person to the right you're playing against the person to the right Okay, so that kind of makes it nice because it, you're not ganging up on anybody. No, we're not all trying to get one person or whatever. You're actually only playing to the person on the right. And as soon as that person's captured, so if I was this person, I'm putting, I'm playing this person, as soon as this person's captured, even if these other people aren't captured, this person wins the round and then you can play an additional game. But you see how this person's surrounded by element stones and therefore he can't move. Now, each of the elements kind of have special abilities, and that's what I'm going to get into next. But uh, you're allowed to choose up to uh, four stones and move one time on each one of your turns, okay? So you're allowed to uh, pull, get up, up to four stones. So if I pulled, like if I just randomly put, and, and I'm, I'm actually going to leave the silver explanation out for a minute. I'm only going to uh, deal with non-silver ones. But let me just kind of explain how each of these elements work. So you have um, fire, water, uh, earth, and wind are your basic elements. And they each have like these little special moves that you can do. So let's just start with water. Now water flows. So if I, if, the, if there's like a water here and a water here, what you want to do is put a water here and then it will flow. And it flows how many ever spaces there are that the water's on. So the water's on three spaces. So I'm going to go one, two, three. And you have to move it, okay? It's not an option. So if I have water, Water creates a river, as they say in the game, and rivers flow. Now, you don't necessarily have to move in a straight line. You can't move diagonally, but you can go, you can go like one, two, three, like that, and then you can move this around like this. So now he's blocked in on this side, and that's how rivers work. And if I did uh, a fourth river, or if I, did, if I drew another one and it was four, then I would be moving four spaces. The only time this doesn't work this way is if you start uh, like building a river over here, then you don't move all of these. You only move these ones like that. So these ones can move around, but you can only drag the ones that are in a straight line. As I recall, as always, read the rules of the game. So that's how rivers work, and they block the person in, so you can use them strategically. You can use them to get out. So let's say you want to get out, and so there's a river here. Your, your opponent has hemmed you in, and therefore you put a river here, and now this river moves three spaces, and now you're allowed to escape because you're allowed to move one move on your escape. and moving the river doesn't count as one of your moves. You just move the river, okay? So that's how the river works. Now, fire works by uh, creating a fire spread. So rivers flow, fires spread. So if I have um, a fire here and a fire here, and I choose uh, one of the red discs, what happens is, is if I put the disc here, I get to choose another red disc out of the bag and boom, now this person's prevented from going this way because fire spreads. So now he can't move diagonally. Now the person can move diagonally. Um, so, you know, if I want to hem him in, I go boom, I put that here and then there and now he can't move that way, okay? So uh, that fire spreads. Now, um, um, earth creates mountains and this is good because this is one of the only ones that can block on a diagonal uh, but what happens is is let's say I'm, I'm building a wall of mountains around here and I build this this and this here okay now one of the special moves that earth has 
is it can create a mountain range. And what I want to do, let's say I'm drawing, I'm this guy, I'm playing against him, and I draw one, I can put it on top of this existing range. Now this becomes a mountain, and he can't move past it, and he can't move past it here either, okay? So, and this becomes permanent. Well, other things can be replaced, which I will get to in a minute because there's the rule of, of replacement. As soon as this becomes a mountain, it can't be replaced for the rest of the game. It's permanent. And you can continue to build a mountain around this person. So you can build it there, and then, you know, if you got another one, you can build it there. Um, well, that was a silver. You can build it, you know, there and he can't move at all after he's surrounded by this mountain element. He can't even move on a diagonal where you can move on a, di a diagonal previously. Okay, so wind doesn't, um, does not uh, hem the person in, in, it actually allows them to escape. So these white ones represent wind. And what happens is if I l lay a wind down here like this, I get to jump that, okay? And that jump doesn't count as one of your moves. You just get to jump the other, the other person. Now, one of the cool things is, is you can create a whirlwind. Now, what a whirlwind does is if you have another one and you can put it on top, then if I have two, then I can jump two spaces like that, okay? So, for example, you know, let's say there was a fire here and you know let's just say for example this person was hemmed in on all the sides and you know moving here is really not going to do them a lot of good but if I put a whirlwind down now I can jump to and get past the fire line or the water or the river or the or the mountain range or whatever so it allows you to jump as many spaces as you stack on there's really no end of the spaces you can stack on although the border also creates a line you can't move past the border of the of the game as well um, and now the next thing you need to understand is the rule of replacement because that becomes a big deal in the in the game each element replaces another element and I got the 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 directions out here uh, because that was one of the things that as I was playing the game, I realized, oh, hey, I had to keep looking back. So you can replace. So um, wind replaces water. So if there's a wind there and you want to replace that with water, you can. Okay. And water replaces fire and then fire replaces earth and earth replaces wind. So why would you want to do that? Well, let's just say you're getting in trouble here and you're getting hemmed in and you don't want him to, to draw another mountain range because once it's a mountain, you can't, you can't move past it. So you go, okay, I'm going to use the rule of replacement and I am going to replace um, earth with wind, right? I think so. Yeah, replaces earth. Wind replaces earth. And now I'm able to jump free, okay? So you can use that as a strategy. Or you can use the rule of replacement to, um, to hem in the person further. So uh, let's say, you know, um, there's a, a river here, but there's fire here, and you want to move that river in front of that person. So what you can do is you can use the rule of replacement and replace that fire with water, and now I've moved in front of that person to hem them in further. And it gets complicated. I mean, I'm obviously I'm making it more simple just to kind of show you what it's about, but basically that's the idea. Now, the silver expansion complicates things, and I'm not going to get into the silver expansion a lot, but basically that's represented by these silver discs, and depending upon uh, which element you want it to be will depend upon how these discs move, okay? So, and how you tell what it, what, well, what are the possibilities? Well, it can be either lightning, it can be metal, 
or it can be wood. That's your additional one. And you just kind of choose it. You just kind of say, well, what do you want to play? You want to play, play lightning? You want to play, or you can draw them at random. You can shuffle the cards and put them under the table and then pull, pull, pull up one of them. And then that's what you decide with. That's what it is for the rest of the time. So, but these actually create their own uh, special movements, which I just am going to encourage you to, to get, to read the rules to get a better understanding of it, because it, it does get a little complicated. But one of the things, for example, lightning can do, is remember why I said that um, um, a mountain range can't be, can't be moved? Uh, well, that's only if you're playing the regular game and you're not playing lightning. So lightning can zap a mountain and then it, and then it moves, it replaces it. And so you can move past it at that point. Okay, um, one of the things, if you decided to be metal, what metal does is it attracts or repels. So if, you know, there's some metal over here and there's some metal and you're trying to hem the guy in, uh, you can go like this and it will, it will attract the metal pieces. Or it'll do the opposite, metal repels if it's magnified, or uh, magnetized, sorry, <laughs> magnetized. So what I can do is I can take this metal piece if I'm getting in trouble and I can put it here and go, whoa, whoa, like that. Now, I think the, uh, and then wood's got its own, but again, let, let me just encourage you to read the, the rules for yourself. This is only meant to be a brief synopsis and it'll get you started on the basic understanding of the game. But um, one of the other things you need to do is, you need to understand is you can move once throughout the game. So I can draw four elements and lay them down and then move once. But if you're in trouble and you feel like you need to move more than once, you can move as many as four times, you just can't draw as many element stones. So let's say, you know, I was all, uh, you know, hemmed up here and, um, you know, I wanted to, it, it, things are looking bad for me and I need to get out of here. I mean, I just need to get out of here. Well, I might choose one element stone and then I get to move my one free one and then one, two, three more times. And then you can move diagonally as long as it's not hemmed in. You know, as long as you're not hemmed in, you can move diagonally and then I can get out of there. So you can move more than once um, if, if you don't choose as many stones. And also, uh, when I mentioned wind, wind, when you put it down and then you move, doesn't count as, uh, doesn't count as a move, okay? So if I lay wind down here and then I move and I drew one and that was my one that I drew was wind, now I get to move four more times. Okay, now I get to move four more times because I only drew one, I get a free one and um, and I used wind to jump because that doesn't count against you. All right, so then the idea is is just to surround the person and there's creative ways to do that and you'll figure it out. You know, you'll kind of figure out, oh yeah, you can kind of move the metal here and then it'll attract and then get the water and it'll flow or get the water and it'll flow out of your way and it actually becomes a pretty fun game. So let's play the game. All right, well, we're back with uh, our review of the game, and I only got one microphone here, so we'll have to share it, but it's actually pretty powerful, so it'll pick us both up here. I got Ashton here. He was the one who helped me play the game. We did uh, about how many rounds? Five. We did five rounds. Five rounds, five rounds, and we did Element, and it's the expanded edition that has 
additional elements to it. Uh, well, what did you think? Well, it's very straightforward game. Uh, basic concept that has a high learning curve. Yeah. Not being able to juggle the four base elements and depending on the fifth advanced element you decide to utilize completely changes how you're playing. Yep, for sure. You've got your basic elements. You have fire, water, wind, and earth. Fire can get out of control really quick. Same thing with water. But <laughs> it's easy to balance them out because th they, you can trade out the tiles. You can prevent your opponent from doing what you want, what they're tr bo trying to box you in. The advanced elements, very interesting mechanics to those, mainly due to... At the very beginning of the game, I thought it was like, it's kind of like you said, straightforward. Yeah. Kind of like you think, okay, well, this this can't be that complicated or whatever, but actually it gets tricky. Because mm -hmm. you're, you you're trying to juggle what you're trying to do, learn how your to, opponent's trying to do. You, you start learning how to uh, combine moves together mm -hmm. Pretty good. So I thought it was a, I thought it was a good game. And how long did it take us to go through five games? About thirty minutes. Yeah, it's roughly thirty, maybe forty. I wasn't keeping track of time. <laughs> I think it was more like an hour or something like that. Because I think we well, yeah, about an hour. Okay. Something like that. But yeah, it's it's quick play, so it's really good. So um, if you're going to make it part of your game night, I would suggest you know playing it multiple times or you know playing in conjunction of another game. Because the games go pretty quickly, so you wouldn't want to want just one game for this. You'd, yeah. you'd be several games. Um, Definitely better to play with more people. Two yeah. people, it, it's fun, but I can see it getting really chaotic with four. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So uh, out of the special elements, which one did you like the most? So I really enjoyed Metal because <laughs> of the ability to make more of them as well as destroy them, combine the elements in a certain manner. And the ability, once you place one down, to attract other yeah. uh, metal tiles to you or repel them. So if you're starting to get boxed in, you can use the repel to get them all away or attract them to pull them away from you or to box your opponent in. Lightning. Lightning is also really well balanced. It gives the wind tile a bit more use. My, my favorite of the, ele of the additional elements was lightning because you can get rid of the damn mountains. <laughs> You did not like that, did I you? I didn't like the mountains, because once the mountains are set in a, as a range, you can't get rid of them. And the only element that can get rid of them is the is the lightning that yeah. can get rid of lightning them. Lightning is a very useful to... It can get rid of any any other element, so I like that one. Uh, wood, that one, it's very interesting mechanic. That was my least favorite. Yeah, it plays heavily into utilization of fire and water. Um, being able to utilize water to get the river to flow into the wood element to produce more of them so you can just have a snowball effect same thing with fire it allows you to get an additional fire tile it's useful but it's a little situational unlike the lightning where oh mountain range okay zap is no longer a solid object or with yeah. metal you're able to add more of them repel the others attract them uh, you, or just completely get rid of that one stone due to the certain element combinations. Yeah, right, right. Was there a part of the game that you didn't like? No, not really. It's actually a very well-made, well-balanced game. The rules are very simple, uh, but it has a learning curve. It's it does. It has a learning curve, and it kind of gets a little... At the, I noticed for myself, it was just like, what does this replace again? Like, I'd go, I'm like, okay, what do I do with this? This one replaces this one. That was kind of, I had to re it, keep it referring be back a bad to the idea rules. to have the rule book open to the what element replaces which. Just for reference, you're like, okay, am I make, doing the right move? But yeah. other than that, it, it was, was really game. fun. It was, it was really fun. Game. I highly recommend it. It's, it's somewhere between something like chess and backgammon and. I don't know. Just, yeah, uh, just uh, you know, uh, it, it requires uh, element strategy. Of surprise. You can't just go in willy nilly. You got to think about it. Yeah, it's and highly strategized game. Yeah. You try to psych out your opponent too. All right. Well, thank you, thank you, Ashton, and thank you for doing this review with me, and thank you for watching another episode of Board Game Life. Please don't forget to subscribe and do me a favor. Please share this on your favorite social media. 
let's spread the word about this channel i'd really appreciate that and then if there is ever a game you'd like me to review please leave that in the comment section below so thanks again and we will talk to you next time on board game life